And that's the answer we really want. All right, questions so far before we move on? And I want to do the next one explicitly and then show you the geometry just to make sure everybody gets it. And after I do that, we'll finish the table. So the next box we're going to do is V14. Okay, Sharon, you're getting this? Is it making sense? Here or there? All right, let's look at V14. Do you know which part of the string V14 is referring to? Good. Starting at the first symbol, four symbols down. Good. Now we want to figure out what non-terminals generate this substring. And that can be done by looking at their productions and figuring out whether the left production generates part of the string on the left and the right production generates part of the string on the right. So there's a lot of ways to split this string up. You can split it one and then three, two and two, and then three and one. All right, so do you want to try to give me the pairs of boxes we have to look at to determine which non-terminals generate each part of those pairs? Two, three. The number of symbols comes second, where you start comes first. Good, what's the next one? Maybe somebody else. You, you, I think you got it. Uh, no volunteers? One, two, and three, two. One, two, and three, two. Is Erica right? Is she always right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Next one. One, three, four, one. One, three, four, one. Is that it? I think that's it, right? Okay. Uh, you could, I could actually, maybe at the very end I'll write the, the, the triple loop that generates these indices to get this going. It, you could do it if I forced it to, but it's just ugly. I mean, it, it, and it's more of an algorithm thing. You could write this with, a, with four or five lines of code and get the i, j's, and k's all working out here. I mean, it's not too bad. You notice this first one stays the same. This increases by one each time, the two, three, four. And the sum of the second indices always equals four. One, three, two, two, three, one. This is a very nice, pretty straightforward pattern there. It isn't too tough to, to write the code to get those indices to, uh, to generate, you know, based on the original indices one and four. The second two add up to the four, and, well, you get the idea. Let's go back here. Geometrically, this works exactly the same way it did before. Left to right in the column, in the row that we're looking at, and then down left in the diagonal. It better. One, one, and two, three. Is that right? Okay, so let's look at this. A, B, A, C. You guys think, and I will fill in. Computer science by democracy. C? A, B, C, B gives you C? A, C. Okay. Uh, let's go on. B, A. Nothing? B, A with A, C. How do you short circuit this a little bit? We already have AC here, right? The only thing we could possibly add on is B. The only thing B possibly goes to is AA. So let's see if this and this give you AA. Oh, they do. So, look, there isn't that much value in learning how to do this quickly because a machine <laughs> can do this. But, but as long as we're doing this example to understand the idea, that is the important point, let's at least try to get through the example painlessly without cluttering up your brains too much. Uh, it's the idea that's important, not this particular uh, skill of going through it quickly. All right, next blank spot. Left, down. So A, C, and A. A, C, A, C. 
B? Yeah, B. And then B and BC. Go down to this one. BC and BAC. It's a lot. All of them? If there's all of them, I don't have to keep going. You can't get B, can you? Oh, there's no A there. No, you can't get B. I can't get B. All right, so we'll have to go on before we include B. So we did these two, and now we're going to do this one and this one, and AA, and that gives you B. All right. Well, now we're up here. Without going back to the drawing board, it's the same geometry this way down the diagonal. So, ACBA. All three. That was easy. Now we don't have to keep going this way and that way because we got them all already. Let's go here. Left, down, AC, ABC, same thing. Uh, yes, ABC. And now we're way over here. So, this means that every five length substring of this can be generated by every one of those non-terminals. And now we're up to the sixth one. This means can we generate the whole string. This depends on whether AC, ABC can be done, and I think that should give you everything. So we stop there. We look, we see that A is there. Therefore, this ge definitely generates this string. Now, a couple things while you ponder this example. In the algorithms class, you had an assignment question, I'm pretty sure, because it's the kind of question I would have put in. I didn't go back and check, but it's, it's what I'd like you to try to do. To put more information in this table, so when you're all done, you can backtrack and figure out not just whether the answer is yes or no, but actually which production to use. Did I give you that question? Yes. All right. It's not completely simple to do that, but it's also not terribly hard. And it's not something I want to talk about now, because you've seen it once before. It can be done, and it's not particularly part of theory of computation. It's more an algorithms issue. But the point is, this algorithm is not just going to answer yes or no. It doesn't take too much extra effort to add in information along the way so that you can backtrack and actually figure out how to parse it, to come up with the actual parse tree. And how long does this algorithm take? That's the next thing. Well, we have a bunch of squares that are about n squared over 2, where n is the length of our string. And how much does it take to fill in each square? Well, the base case takes one step, more or less. But every time we move to the right, it takes two steps and three steps and four steps and five steps and six steps. So this is like you have n squared things, and each time through, you're summing up a little bigger piece. We actually did this sum. We did it in discrete math. We did it again in algorithms. I'm not going to do it again now. But if you add up this sum, it's ends up being a constant factor times n cubed, like one-third n cubed. It's definitely less than n cubed, but it's order n cubed. The worst case is here, where you're really doing n operations. But it doesn't add up to order n squared. It adds up to order n cubed. It's very similar to the sum of the first n squares. One squared, two squared, three squared, four squared. It's a little like that sum. And it ends up being n cubed. So this algorithm runs in order n cubed. Practically, it's a very small constant factor in front of the n cubed. So you could probably actually run this on some very small programming languages and grammars and, and make it work and not have it be too bad. And it would do parsing of any context-free language, any context-free grammar. That's a loaded question. I got this horrible feeling we made a mistake. Why doesn't 2, 4 not much get a C? It really wouldn't matter, right? But why doesn't 2, 4 get a C? Let's look at 2, 4 again. 2, 4 combine A, C, and B. A, B, and C, B. I guess C, B already there. It should have gotten. This should have a C in it. But since everything else has everything already, we don't have to change everything after that. But you're right. That's just a mistake. Where did that come from? A, C, O. It didn't come from that pair, right? And it didn't come from this pair. Uh-oh. No, I don't think it needs. 